Welcome to the Insightful Professor. In today's presentation, we're going to demonstrate how to use the Eclipse IDE. You may have installed Eclipse and created a desktop icon, such as what I have on my desktop here. To start it, simply double click the icon and the initialization process begins. The first question that we have to address is selecting a workspace. Uh, a workspace in Eclipse is, a simple, is uh, essentially a directory, a file location where your work is going to be stored. So we have to establish this. You can use the same workspace all the time, but on the initial startup, you have to establish at least one workspace. So here it's saying I'm on this particular drive, this path, and it's Eclipse workspace. That's adequate. Uh, you can set that to whatever you want. I'll just go ahead and launch it with that selected. After acknowledging the workspace, the workbench is loaded. And the first time you fire up Eclipse, you'll see a welcome screen. Uh, you can allow this to be displayed in future times. Simply uh, keep the checkbox uh, in the lower corner here uh, checked. Uh, otherwise, you can uncheck it and you'll suppress the display of this. We really are not too concerned with this screen. We're simply going to go into the workbench and we can enter that by clicking on the workbench icon. Now at this point, we've started up Eclipse and we're ready to actually create a little project, create a class, create an application, all that good stuff. Let's walk through the process that we're going to have to follow. We've started Eclipse. The next thing we want to do is create a project. So we say File, New, and the option we'll select is Java Project. A dialog comes up, and in response to the dialog, we give a name to the project. I'll simply call this Hello World Project. Leaving the rest of this dialog with the default settings, I simply click the Finish button, and the project has been created. You'll note over in the left of the display in the workspace, what we see is under the Package Explorer, a new entry has been entered, Hello World Project. So now we're going to work with this project, and the next thing we're going to do is create a Java class. To create the Java class, we use the New Class or New Java Class icon in the Iconic Toolbar. And that's right up here underneath the words Navigate and Search. So I select that and select the Class option. And again, another dialog is presented. Note it refers back to Hello World Project. This is the project, again, correlated to a directory location. This is the project into which the class will be placed. Specifically, it's placed within a folder called source, or abbreviated here as SRC. We'll leave the package blank for the moment, and we'll talk about packages a little bit later. We're going to take the default package. This is suitable or adequate for creating a simple little application, as we're going to be doing here. But we'll discuss pa packages in a bit more detail down the road. So let's call the class hello world, and this time I spell it as one character string, no spaces between hello and world. The other thing I want to do is this is going to be a Java application, which means it must include a main method. This is where the execution of the code will begin. So down here, there's a question that says, which, which method stubs would you like to create? We click where it says public static void main, making sure that that's checked, and then click on the finish. And what we have is the source code folder now includes, under the default package, hello world.java. Remember, when we create the class hello world, this will be stored in an operating system file with the same name and a file type or extension of Java, hello world.java. So up here we see public class hello world, public static void, and then this comment, which is simply a reminder to us that we're going to put our code in here. So this is a to-do uh, entry. So I'm going to remove that comment and simply put a statement that says system.out.println and put a little message that says hello 
world. And then, because it's a Java statement, I terminate that with a semicolon. At this point, I've created my source code for the class, actually for the application. I can hit the combination from the keyboard of the Control key and S. Control S will compile the code. And it saves it. So this has been saved. The hello world.java file has now been updated with the content that we have in our edit display. And it's been compiled. There are no compile errors, so I'm ready to run the application. I simply go up to the iconic toolbar again, and there's an option over here. Beneath the words source and refactor, there's a run, a little triangle within the screen circle. I click on that, and I simply run the application. Down below, what we see is in the console display, what we get is hello world, which is what we sent to the print line method, and that's what's displayed down here. So there's the output of our code. And that's it. A simple way to start the Eclipse IDE Enter class and run an application. Now let's make a couple of additional comments about this IDE and what it does for you. The IDE, in this case Eclipse, recognizes Java keywords. Notice public, class, static, void, all of these keywords or reserved words of the Java language are presented or rendered on the screen in a different color. Again, emphasizing the point that these are keywords. In addition, you'll see the different data types that you might use, such as a character string here enclosed in quotation marks. That's also rendered in a slightly different color. And there was a comment. I removed it, but let's put a comment in here right now. I'm going to put a little comment up here. Remember, one way to make a one-line comment, two slashes, and then the rest of the line constitutes a comment. Observe that the comment is also highlighted in a different color. So the IDE makes it very obvious that you're entering keywords that it recognizes, you've entered comments, and, and so on. It, again, uses this color coding to assist the programmer in writing code. Now, I've made some modifications to the code here. Observe up in the tab where it says hello world.java that there's a little asterisk. This indicates that the code has not been recently compiled or saved. It's been modified since the last compilation. So once again, I'll hit the control S key combination. It compiles it. There are no errors, so notice the asterisk goes away. This is a visual cue that this code is compiled and up to date. Let's put a little piece of code in here that copies the previous line and suggest that we want to print this message two times. So we've modified the code and once again the asterisk indicating it's not yet been compiled. So let me remove the semicolon, and this causes an error because we're violating the syntax. You'll see this little X here indicating that something's wrong with the line. If you hover over that, it suggests what the problem solution is. Syntax error. Insert a semicolon to complete the statement. And notice at the end of the statement, that there's this little red line, this little glyph, which is an indication that this is where the syntactic problem was identified. If we were to actually attempt to save it and compile it, control S, uh, we make no progress, but also what, note, what we note is up at the top in the tab, there's again a little X indicating, well, it compiled, but it compiled with errors. So let's fix this by putting a second semicolon. And now it looks clean, but we've still not yet compiled it. Control S. Now the asterisk goes away, that little red X goes away. It's compiled, saved, and ready to run. So we'll run it once again. Hit the Run button. And when it runs, now we see Hello World presented two times. A couple of very interesting points about the usefulness and the helpfulness of this particular IDE. One additional comment about how the IDE, IDE attempts to help you in writing the code. There's a feature called Code Assist 
and this is where the IDE says well you're starting to build this this is what you could want this might be what you want and it makes some suggestions assisting you in writing the code personally I find it rather annoying uh, but some people find it very helpful if I type in system dot out notice as soon as I type system and put the dot it starts to make some suggestions I can continue to type and at some point maybe I'll take the system up on whatever suggestion it makes. So I could, for example, start to type print line and look at the options that we see here. So I could click on one of the options and it inserts the rest of the code for me. So this is called code assist. And again, it's helpful if you're just learning some of the features of the language, uh, but as you become more comfortable, more proficient, you might find that it kind of gets in the way. So anyway, uh, we could go ahead and modify this if we wish, but at least we have now correct code. That's the code assist feature. Now, one other thing I wanted to present to you was something I mentioned a few moments ago, but I said we would come back to it later. We kind of skipped over it. And that's the idea of a packet. When you write the Java code, if you do not explicitly specify the name of a package, all of the code will be stored in what's called the default package. That might be suitable if you're dealing with a single application. But if you're dealing with complex applications where you're writing multiple classes and you want to be able to communicate between these classes very, very uh, say, concisely and efficiently, then you want to store the various classes together in what's called a package. This is useful in developing complex applications and distributing them as well. So let's take a quick look at another option here in using the package where we explicitly create and then put our code within the package. Okay, first I'm going to close out this hello world.java program and we'll save it. Here I am in the package explorer and you'll see under source under the hello world project we've got the default package. What I want to do now is create another package. So I'll say file new package and I'll call this first program and click finish. Note that at the same level of indentation where we see default package we see this thing called first program which is the package I just created. Now I'm going to create a class and put the class within that package. So I'm going to go to the new class icon and notice it says hello world project under source and it's within package first program. So I'll call this another. I'll make it such that it has a main method. It's an application. I click finish. I'll get the skeleton code and the interesting difference here is at the very top it adds a line that says this class that you're about to create is contained within a package called first program. So then what we'll do is we'll write our code and it will be stored within this within this particular package. The benefit to this is if I were to create a series of classes and the classes interact with one another, hence they are related to one another, they would not only be logically related but they would be physically grouped together within a folder called first program somewhere within the operating system within our, our workspace. So this makes it very efficient for distribution of the code as well. If you're taking the first programming course, this really is not a, that important of an issue to you. But when you take the second programming course, where we really get into object-oriented programming, this becomes a very important point to understand. But anyway, I've shown you briefly how to create a package and how to put code within that. If I were to go and create another class, I can, again, by completing the dialog, ensure that this class will also be placed within the same package. And I'll call this XXX, click Finish, and what we'll see is indented under first program, the name of the package, we now see another .java and XXXX.java. Those two Java files are stored in the same folder in the operating system, but they are able to communicate with one another very efficiently. We don't have to do extended qualification of objects.
or of, of classes. So anyway, that's a little bit more on using this particular IDE. Okay, hopefully you found uh, this to be useful, and what I'll do is I'll post uh, the handout that's related to how to understand the menu options and the iconic toolbar to give you some assistance in using the utility or the IDE. But I just wanted to give you a little demonstration of how this thing works and how things come together. So I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful.